This is related to the lab, location on the geographic grid, latitude and longitude. I have to operate under the assumption that you are either concurrently taking the lecture class and therefore have some knowledge of the geographic grid and latitude and longitude, or you've already taken the lecture class and passed it, and of course then understand the geographic grid and latitude and longitude. Nevertheless, so that you can complete the lab today, I'm going to give you enough information to where even if you are a complete novice with this, you still should be able to complete the lab. So let's take a look at it. Within the context of the geographic grid and latitude and longitude, there are some critical lines and locations. Now, if you look at the right-hand side, you can see that that is a grid. In math, when you're using a grid or you're graphing something, you generally have two components, X and Y. In this case, of course, we're going to have latitude and longitude. Let's begin with latitude. There are three important lines and locations to start with when we look at latitude. First of all, the equator, which gets a designation of zero degrees. The North Pole, which gets a designation of 90 degrees north, written like that, 90 degree symbol, capital N period, indicating 90 degrees north. And the South Pole, which is at 90 degrees south, written 90 degree symbol, capital S period. You've probably heard of all three of those. The other part of the geographic grid is longitude. Longitude has two significant locations or lines, to start with at least. The prime meridian, which is zero degrees, so this is where we begin counting with longitude. And the international date line, which is found at 180 degrees west or east, those are both the same place halfway around the planet from the prime meridian. We're going to begin with latitude, though. Latitude is this. It's angular distance, which means distance measured in degrees between the equator and the poles. It indicates how far north or south a given point is, and is measured in degrees from zero to 90 degrees. Now this is a system of counting, but it's a limited system of counting. You can count from zero to 90, which means there is no 91, no 191 in latitude. Zero to 90, and that's it. And if we have a system of counting, where are we going to begin? Let's start at zero. Zero, of course, is the equator. The Earth rotates around its axis, which is what gives us our 24-hour day. At the same time, that rotation around the axis, as we rotate from west to east, also gives us our two naturally occurring points on this planet. At one end of the axis is the North Pole. At the other end of the axis is the South Pole. The equator is found halfway between them. In fact, that's how we created the equator. We could have put the North Pole as a starting point for latitude, but how would that have made people at the South Pole feel? And we could have had the starting place for latitude be the South Pole. How would people at the North Pole have felt? So what do we do? We kind of solemnically split the baby in half and put the equator right in the middle, halfway between the North and South Poles, and that's where we began counting with latitude. Take a look at this diagram. The Earth is rotating around the axis on this diagram. The axis is indicated by the yellow arrows, and you can see that red kind of pole coming out of the Earth. Now, of course, there is no physical character to the axis. Nevertheless, we are, of course, rotating around the axis from west to east. Well, at one end, you can see, is the North Pole, and at the other end is the South Pole. Then halfway between that, those two points, is going to be the equator. Take a look at this diagram. You can see the equator is designated zero degrees, and then the North Pole on the top of the diagram is designated 90 degrees north. The South Pole on the bottom of the diagram is designated 90 degrees south. You see where the equator's at? The red arrows are pointing at it. What would happen is this. If you were standing at the equator and you begin to move north, What's going to happen is you're going to begin to count. It's a system of counting. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. Eventually, you would get to 90 degrees north. And if you were at the North Pole and you took one step off the North Pole, you would begin to head south. And if you continued to move in that direction, you would go from 90 to 89 to 88 to 87 and so on. The same thing happens if you're at the equator and you start moving south. You'd start counting zero, one, two, three, until you eventually reach the South Pole. And if you're at the South Pole and you started heading north, you'd go from 90 to 89 to 88 and so on. The equator has another job besides being the starting point for latitude. 
It also splits the Earth into two equal halves. The word equator means equal, as you can see with the red and the bronze arrows. So take a look at this map. You can see the equator going right through the middle, that thick red line. Let's name some countries that the equator goes through. Ecuador, which is named after the equator, Colombia, Brazil. In addition to that, Gabon, Congo, the Democratic Republic of Congo. You can see that it goes through a little bit of Uganda, Kenya, a tiny bit of Somalia. It goes through Indonesia. Very good. Okay, now take a look at this diagram. Those red arrows are indicating this. Everything north of the equator is in what's known as the northern hemisphere. The word hemisphere means half of a sphere. A sphere is a ball, so this is the northern half of the Earth. Then those bronze arrows are telling you this. Everything south of the equator would be in the southern hemisphere. Excellent, the southern half of the planet. Let's practice a little bit. What hemisphere is the United States in? That would be the northern, very good. Argentina, southern, excellent. Iran, that would be the northern. And Botswana, southern hemisphere, excellent. Okay, there are other lines of latitude besides simply the equator. Here I just put some on. See all those lines? Those lines are called parallels. So line of latitude is a fine name, but the technical scientific name for lines of latitude is parallels. And parallels are exactly what they sound like they are. They are parallel to each other. Do you know what parallel means? Parallel means they never touch each other. They always remain the same distance apart. And with regard to parallels, lines of latitude, they are always 69 miles apart, which means if you travel from five degrees north to six degrees north in the most direct route, you just went 69 miles. If you travel from 10 degrees south to 20 degrees south, you traveled 10 degrees of latitude, 10 times 69 is 690 miles. Excellent.